When Muslims preach Islam to a Christian, they're quick to say, we believe in Jesus too. But when you start asking what they mean by belief in Jesus, it turns out to have nothing to do with the Jesus who walked the shores of the Sea of Galilee. Muhammad simply told his followers that many of the most important people who came before him were Muslims, even though we know historically that they weren't Muslims at all. So the claim, we believe in so-and-so who came before Muhammad, for a Muslim just means we believe in Muhammad and in the Islamic version of so-and-so that Muhammad came up with when he stole so-and-so from so-and-so's real followers. It seems that Muhammad robbed more than caravans, my friends. He also robbed religions. If you happen to point out to a Muslim preacher that all of our historical sources, not to mention every respected historical Jesus scholar on the planet, reject the Islamic view of Jesus, you're sure to get a thoughtful, carefully researched response. Oh, did I say thoughtful, carefully researched response? I meant you're sure to get an outlandish conspiracy theory. Why does all of history contradict the Islamic view of Jesus? Because someone corrupted all of history. Who corrupted it? If you're talking to a Muslim who knows absolutely nothing about history, you'll hear something about the Council of Nicaea in the fourth century. But if you're talking to a Muslim who knows anything whatsoever about history, he'll know that Jesus' death, resurrection, and deity can all be traced back to the first century, so he'll need to give you a first century conspiracy theory, and that's when he'll tell you that the Apostle Paul corrupted Christianity. Of course, the idea that someone could destroy Jesus' message should sound strange, whether you're a Christian or a Muslim. Jesus lived the most miraculous life in history, which means that his work and message must have been pretty important. But it was all a waste of time, according to Muslims, because God couldn't protect Jesus' message from the mighty Apostle Paul. In Quran chapter 3, verse 55, Allah promised Jesus that he would protect Jesus' followers until the day of resurrection. So Allah thought he could protect Jesus' message. Too bad Allah wasn't prepared for the Apostle Paul. Our Muslim friends just don't see a problem with believing in someone whose message totally contradicts Islam and magically waving away all available evidence with their conspiracy wand. How can we get them to understand how silly this is? I know. Let's do the same thing to Muhammad. Let me announce here that I believe in Muhammad. I'm sure Muslims will be thrilled to hear this and they'll respond, that's great, David. So you agree with us that Muhammad was a prophet of Allah. No, I don't. You see, the Muhammad you Muslims believe in is a corruption. I believe in the true Muhammad, who was a devout Christian. He was convinced that God is a trinity and that Jesus is the divine son who entered creation, died on the cross for sins, and rose from the dead. Now, you may be wondering, if Muhammad was a devout Christian, why do Islam's most trusted sources say that he preached Islam and claimed to be a prophet? I'm glad you asked. I'll explain what happened. Before the time of Muhammad, most of the Christians in Arabia were heretics and compromisers. Muhammad came to restore true faith in Jesus Christ. He spent his entire life telling people to turn away from their sins, to accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior, and to believe that God is one in essence, but three in person, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Many pagans converted to Christianity under the powerful preaching of Muhammad. Before he died, he gave his followers the Quran, which, in its original uncorrupted form, was simply an Arabic translation of the New Testament. But there was a villain, an evil pagan named Uthman, who hated Christianity, didn't know Muhammad, and worshipped Allah, one of the many pagan deities of Arabia. After Muhammad died, Uthman decided to destroy everything Muhammad had worked so hard to accomplish. The diabolical Uthman realized that the best way to destroy Muhammad's work would be to become a wolf in sheep's clothing and to infiltrate the Christian community in Arabia. So he pretended to be a Christian, and his deception was so convincing that he eventually rose to a position of leadership in the church. Once he was in charge, Uthman ordered all of the Christians in Arabia to hand over their copies of the Quran, i.e. their copies of the Arabic translation of the New Testament. 
Uthman then rewrote the entire Quran, turning it into a book that denies the core teachings of Christianity, and he forced the Christians of Arabia to believe in his corrupted Quran. So the Islam that Muslims believe in today isn't the religion that Muhammad preached. Muhammad preached submission to Jesus Christ. Uthman corrupted this message by claiming that Allah is the only true God and that Jesus was a mere prophet of Allah. He did this in order to degrade Jesus and to keep people from believing in Christianity, the religion of Muhammad. Now, how can Muslims refute my theory? They can't appeal to the Quran, since all known copies of the Quran were written after Uthman corrupted it. But Muslims can't appeal to the Hadith, Sirah, literature, or commentaries either, since all of these were written after the time of Uthman. Muslims can't even say that Uthman was one of Muhammad's companions, since I hereby declare that Uthman simply wrote himself into Muhammad's life to help establish his own authority. Isnad criticism is irrelevant, since later Isnad critics were under the influence of Uthman's false teachings. I conclude that Muhammad preached Orthodox Christianity and that Uthman was the true founder of what is now called Islam. If you like, I can even cherry pick verses of the Quran and passages from the Hadith to support my claims, the way Muslim apologists do with the Bible. In fact, if any Muslims would like to debate my theory, I would be happy to defend my claim that Muhammad was a devout Christian. I'll be sure to rely on the methods of Zakar Naik, Ahmed Didat, and Shabir Ali to support my case. What better way to twist and distort history than by using the methods that Muslim debaters use to twist and distort the history of Jesus? The only possible response here from Muslims is that it's silly and irrational to throw out facts of history by saying that someone corrupted all of the evidence. But Muslims can't say this because it's exactly what they do with Jesus. The facts of history tell us that Jesus wasn't a Muslim, so the facts of history must have been changed. Fine. The facts of history tell us that Muhammad wasn't a Christian, so the facts of history must have been changed. Spread the word, Christians. Muhammad was a devout Christian whose life and teachings were corrupted by Uthman. There's absolutely nothing Muslims can say or do to prove otherwise. Does all of this sound ridiculous to you, my Muslim friends? Now you know how we feel. Muhammad eventually had somewhere between 9 and 11 wives at one time, even though the Quran says that Muslim men are limited to 4 wives at a time, and he would have sex with all of them on the same day. Sahih al-Bukhari, 5068. The Prophet used to go around, have sexual relations with all his wives in one night, and he had 9 wives. 